So inside of our password resets controller, we'll add our edit here and we'll look up that user and say user.find signed this time. And instead of passing in an ID with uh, the regular find, find signed is going to take that token from our URL and look that up. So we will say here params token and we will have our purpose of uh, password reset. And that's going to look up the user and it will also confirm that the token is not more than 15 minutes old and we'll be able to see if we can get that user. And if we can, we need to render out the edit for that page. So we can go into app views, password resets. We'll grab the new and we'll just go and create an edit html.arb and we can paste this in and we'll change the form. So we'll say reset your password and this is going to go to the reset password edit path and we will have a password field uh, for both of these. So if we go into our registrations new we can grab the two password fields that we had before and paste those in here and just reuse those inside of our reset password. So now we can refresh this page and we should get the reset your password with our password and password confirmation. So that is working like we want it to. And we can also go and generate our own um, expired token to use. So let's say user.last.signedid and we will say purpose is password reset but expires in one second. So by the time I take this URL and I put it in the browser, it will be expired and we should get an error from Rails that it cannot load this token or verify this token. So if we replace that token in the browser, our page is still going to render and there was no error that was submitted, but our user variable here was actually set to nil. And if we want to inspect that, we can say binding.irb and we can refresh this page and it will hang because we can go to our Rails terminal and see that binding the IRB has paused. So if we type at user, we can actually access this variable as part of the process. We pause the Ruby process and we'll see that it has not found that user. Now, this isn't super useful for us. Um, it would be easier if we had a way to throw an exception and this method has a bang version which will actually throw an error when you can't verify that uh, token. So here we can grab this error message and we can rescue from that error and we can say let's redirect to the sign in path or we could redirect to the password reset path, whatever you want. You just want to say that um, your token has expired. Please try again. Uh, some message so that the user knows we need to reset our password again because that token has expired. Um, so now if we go and refresh our page, we will get taken back to the sign in path and we can go back and walk through this process again to get a real valid token. And now we can click on this link and be taken to the reset your password form without an error. So now we need to go through and define the update method to actually process this and handle that password reset. Now the user isn't currently signed in, so we have an issue here where we need to actually create the form with the token inside of it. So we can use that in the update to find the correct user to reset their password and then they can log in with that new password. We're not actually going to log them in as part of this process. So what we'll do is we'll copy this line and paste it in our update, but we're gonna need that params token in here somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll say token is params token inside of our form URL and then we're gonna change this to include the model for the user. What that will do is allow us to specify the params here so we have them nested under user password and user password confirmation. And we'll see that uh, will still work if we refresh our page, but now we have the forms URL, the action, includes the token, 
And then the names of our fields, the password here, the name is user square brackets password, which will translate to the nested hash of user and the password inside of that on the Rails side. So then we can go to our password resets controller and say if at user.update, um, we'll say password params, and we'll define our method for that password params, params dot require our user and we'll permit the password and password confirmation here. Now if the password is valid we want to redirect to the sign in path and we'll give you a notice saying your password was reset successfully please sign in. And otherwise we want to just render the edit again so that the user can uh, try again and fill in their correct passwords. So let's try this. Let's refresh our page. We're missing an end in our method there. So now we can go to forgot your password. We'll go to chris at gorails.com. Reset that. We can go open up our Rails logs. Scroll down, find the link, and then we can type in our password. Now I'm going to type in ones that don't match so that we're, our validations should work, but we don't get any errors here. And that is because our form doesn't have any errors in it. So let's go to the registrations new and grab that block of code for rendering errors. Now one important thing to point out here is that you need a model in order for these lines of code to work. So this form object will reference the model that you pass in on the line above it, and that is required in order for this uh, to render out errors because the errors are actually kept inside of your uh, model record, your instance of that new record or an existing one, and that's why we have to use a model here. So now if we try it again, we'll say a password that doesn't match, and we should get password confirmation doesn't match password, but if it does, we should see that succeed, and we can now go to sign in with that other password. And there we go. So all of that is now working, and we have functional password resets. And now we get to move on to, to some actual fun stuff, building our Twitter authentication and scheduling out our tweets to be sent out.